Hello. Today, let's talk about Innovio, the latest news, updates, and what, according to the CEO, is in store for 2021, which is looking big and may be the breakout year for Innovio. Our Innovate Phase 2 segment of the clinical trials is ongoing now. We expect to have the data by end of March uh, to share with the FDA the Phase 2 data and we also expect to resolve the, the device issues with the FDA, whereby we are hopeful that we can start the phase three portion of our innovate phase two slash three trials in second quarter of this year. Stick around to get all these updates, what I'm looking for in the coming months ahead and my price target moving forwards. Keep it simple. For those of you new to the channel, I am the simple trader. I share with you nuclear growth stocks that I'm buying, looking to buy, or already have sitting in my freedom portfolio. I am not a financial advisor, so please understand, this is all just for entertainment purposes only. Full disclosure, I released my first video on Innovio after starting a position back in November last year. The stock went up, sideways, down, and then entered into a period of consolidation, or what I call limbo, before quite a big sell-off at the end of December, which has kept my position in the red ever since. No more plugging, let's start drilling. On the 15th of December, Innovio released details of a $37.6 million funding granted by the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, DARPA, and the Department of Defense's DOD Joint Program Executive Office for Chemical, Biological, Radiological, and Nuclear Defense in order to develop DNA-encoded monoclonal antibody, DMAP, candidates to treat COVID-19. The funding was provided to an innovative private-public team, which includes Innovio, AstraZeneca, University of Pennsylvania, the Wistar Institute, and the Indiana University, in order to use Innovio's innovative DNA-encoded monoclonal antibody technology to develop anti-SARS-CoV-2 specific DMAPs which could offer versatile capabilities to function as both a therapeutic and preventative treatment for COVID-19. I think this could be big, and it shows that Innovio are now looking to develop therapeutic treatments for COVID-19 on top of the preventative vaccine form. So, they're actually looking for cures as well as vaccines. The press release goes on to say this, and I think this is vital as I'm trying to piece things together, and I quote, recombinant monoclonal antibodies which represent the largest segment of pharmaceutical markets today with more than $100 billion in sales are designed to enhance the immune system's ability to regulate cell functions. The next part is just massive and is very critical for things moving forward, which is they go on to say basically their DNA technology along with their patented proprietary Selectra delivery system offers a disruptive and differentiated solution to the challenges and limitations with the conventional recombinant monoclonal antibody-based treatments available today. Now, I'm not a biologist or medical expert, but from that, what I'm getting is Innovio's ability to sequence DNA to produce a monoclonal antibodies is disruptive and together with their unique delivery technology stands to be a game changer in the space. I think there is huge potential here considering the group that has been formed and the huge funding from DARPA and the DOD. These are very smart people and this tells me there is an element of certainty and proof of concept already on the table. If this does materialize in the coming few years into commercialization, this could be a game changer and we could see Innovio really rise up to major pharma levels. I will get you that championship team. On the 24th of December last year, Christmas came early and Innovio's INO4800, their COVID-19 vaccine candidate, phase one clinical results finally passed the peer review and which are now available on the Lancet's website. 
This is huge news as it affirms what we in Novio investors have known for a long time. According to the study, approximately 78 to 84 percent of trial participants developed neutralizing antibodies against COVID-19. Further to this, 100 percent of participants developed measurable immune responses with no serious side effects. Now, why is this significant? This could be the winning formula to rise to the top. We have seen recently lots of reports of side effects and even deaths. The only negative that we should bear in mind is that both Pfizer and Moderna's vaccines showed 100% neutralizing antibody responses in their respective phase one trials, compared to Inovio's 78 to 84%. There is, however, one major advantage, which is the storage and transportational benefits of INO4800. Uh, the one major difference between DNA and mRNA is the temperature stability of the vaccine itself. We have extensive thermal stability, which helps with storage and distribution conditions. We have one year stability dating at room temperature, which is a stark advantage over other vaccine modalities. Uh, up to five years shelf life and normal refrigeration temperature. In fact, our vaccine never has to be frozen. On the 4th of January, Inovio released details of a $100 million deal with China's Ad Vaccine, which forms a collaboration and licensing agreement to market INO4800 in the Greater China region, which includes mainland China, Hong Kong, Macau, and Taiwan. Inovio stands to receive an upfront payment of $3 million as well as $108 million in milestone payments moving forward. This could just be massive. The market in China is huge. Innovia have also commenced a phase two study of INO4800 in China in collaboration with that vaccine. Things are prepping up for mass production, which is also a clear sign of intent. Uh, where Innovio's INO4800 can help uh, with our distinctive key differentiating factors like thermal stability, safety, and immunogenicity, uh, once our vaccine shows efficacy and safety in phase three trials, and once we uh, get, receive approval for, for commercialization, we would be able to help uh, with this battle against this COVID-19 pandemic. So our team is totally dedicated in moving our program forward as rapidly as possible. Uh, as I stated earlier, uh, we are in the middle of uh, executing our phase two trials in this quarter. We look forward to starting the phase three trials uh, in the second quarter. And we hope to have the interim efficacy data by the fall uh, of this year. So that's, that's the goal that we're working towards. Uh, we're extremely uh, fortunate to have the Department of Defense funding both portions of our innovate phase two phase three trials in the u.s and and we couldn't be any more excited about that on the 6th of january innovio released a positive phase two efficacy in their vgx 3100 hpv cancer vaccine the headline is that this type of cancer associated only currently has one form of treatment that involves invasive surgery. What VGX3100 demonstrated in the phase two efficacy results is that 63% of treated patients demonstrated clinically significant reduction of HPV 16 and 18 associated precancerous vulva lesions six months after treatment. This is a big win and to me, proof of concept the results also showed that VGX3100 can be safe and tolerable. Innovio goes on to say they plan phase three trials to commence later this year in 2021. We plan to have top line unblinded efficacy and safety data in the first half of 2021. I'm very confident that we'll be able to deliver the top line efficacy data from uh, Reveal 1 study in the first half of this year. Reveal 2 is continuing and we are continually re recruiting patients across the globe. Our goal is to uh, work with the FDA 
uh, to have a phase three trials designed and initiated by later in 2021. Really what we envision VGX 3100 is to become the go-to immunotherapy solution for all precancerous diseases caused by HPV 16 and 18. So cervical, anal, and vulvar precancers caused by HPV 16 and 18 subtypes, we will be able to address uh, with VGX 3100. Let's take a look at the price action. We saw a steady sell-off in December and I think this was inevitable as other vaccines were coming to market and rolling out for public use. However, what we did see is the strong support line at around $8 standing very firm. This is a good indication for me that the only direction the stock can go is up. As we move into 2021 and with the catalyst that Dr. Kim has announced in the HC Rainwright call, I can see Inovio slowly regaining $12. As Dr. Kim mentioned, we should expect some phase 2 efficacy data from INO4800 in the first quarter, meaning if this news comes out before the end of March, we could see a huge rally. What could spark this even more is if we continue to see issues with the current vaccines on the market. My short term price target till March is around $12 to $15 levels if I'm being conservative. And depending on how explosive the INO4800 data is, I think it could go as high as $20. Then by June, with the data from VGX3100 and the announcement of Phase 3 INO4800 commencement, I think Innovio could regain the $30 levels that they held back in June last year. Looking further forward, if they somehow manage to pull off full FDA approval by the end of 2021 and move into commercialization, then I could see the stock going triple figures and easily hitting $90 to $100 by the end of the year. Other catalysts would include their work which is currently ongoing outside of the US such as in China and in Korea, which may help to send the stock further up. To end, let's listen to a final segment of Dr. Kim telling us what the goals of Innovio are in the shorter term, which gives me as a long-term Innovio investor, some much needed confidence going forward. Our goal is to be the leader in the second wave of COVID-19 vaccines to be approved and utilized to fight this pandemic. So obviously the messenger, two messenger RNA vaccines are ahead of us, the viral vaccines from AstraZeneca and J&J, and, and potentially the protein vaccine from Novavax would be ahead of us. But the next wave, second wave of uh, COVID vaccines to be approved is where Innovio would like to establish our leadership. As I mentioned earlier, we plan to finish the phase two clinical trials in the first quarter of this year, start the phase three Innovate trial in the second quarter. And we're hopeful that we can see interim efficacy readouts by this fall. And by the winter time, we're hopeful that we would be able to, if the EUA path is available, at that time, utilize that path. Otherwise, apply for the biologics licensing as soon as our phase three trials is complete. In terms of the market size, of course, you know, there are almost 8 billion people in the world who may have to be uh, vaccinated against this COVID-19. You know, we're not going to be the first vaccine to be approved, but we will be in the top six or seven vaccines to get approved in our battle, our collective battle against this pandemic. As much as Inovio can provide I know 4800, I think uh, it will be an important uh, arsenal against this pandemic, not just in the U.S., but also uh, all parts of the world, Europe, Asia. Africa and everywhere. Yeah, we have a very strong uh, and healthy cash position. At our last reported quarter, uh, uh, September 30th, we had a little over $337 million in cash. So that's more cash than this company has ever had. We have a very strong resources. We have a dedicated team. We have a wonderful uh, candidates uh, from our DNA medicines platform. And I couldn't be any more excited about what's to come in 2021 with our COVID vaccine going into phase three and demonstrating hopefully efficacy later in the year, demonstrating efficacy of VGX 3100 and continually moving our other pipeline programs, INO 5401, INO 3107. We have a very, very full pipeline 
and lots of catalysts to come. And we look forward to commercializing one, two, three, and more of these products in the next several years, and perhaps starting with INO 4800 this year. Thank you for watching, and remember that I do have a position in Innovia, so please do take my analysis with precaution, do your own due diligence, and speak to a professional before you look to invest any of your money. If you are interested in other huge growth stocks that I have in my Freedom portfolio, please check out my other videos. For more huge growth stock picks, analysis, and updates, please stay tuned and consider, just consider, subscribing to my channel so you get all the information first. I am the simple trader and I try to keep this very simple and we'll simply see you next time.